Rocket Lab is one of the top leaders in the spaceflight industry, carrying out launches for government agencies and commercial customers. They launch satellites using their rocket, named Electron, which has deployed 150 satellites to date across 30 different launches. Rocket Lab has always launched Electron from their launch complex on the Mahia Peninsula of New Zealand, which features two launch pads, but soon they'll be operating a third pad in Wallops, Virginia. Electron is on the smaller side of rockets, standing at a height of 18 meters or 59 feet. It's designed to carry small satellites, and it's powered by Rocket Lab's own Rutherford engines. Electron is made up of two stages, in addition to a third kick stage, which delivers satellites to the precise orbit. However, Rocket Lab more recently introduced its Photon spacecraft, which flew for the first time on Rocket Lab's 14th flight in August 2020. Photon is a spacecraft developed by Rocket Lab that simplifies the process of operating a satellite for customers. Photon is based on Rocket Lab's kick stage, using components that have significant flight heritage already. Like their kick stage, Photon also flies as the third stage of Electron. Rocket Lab is also working on making Electron partially reusable by catching the first stage mid-air with a helicopter. Recovering the first stage is extremely valuable for them since it's the most expensive part of the rocket, being equipped with nine of their Rutherford engines. Reusing Electron will reduce Rocket Lab's launch expenses, improve their margins, and increase launch frequency since they won't be needing to build a new first stage for every single Electron launch. Rocket Lab caught a booster for the first time in May this year, but the helicopter dropped the booster shortly after. More electrons capable of reuse will be flown in the future. Rocket Lab is also developing a new rocket called Neutron. Neutron will be significantly larger than Electron, designed for heavier payloads including mega constellations, deep space missions, and human spaceflight. Neutron's first stage will also be capable of being reused, in addition to their fairing. This will be done by propulsively landing the first stage, similar to how SpaceX does with their Falcon 9. Being able to land the fairing with the first stage is very unique since it's traditionally located above the second stage, but Rocket Lab is able to do it by making the fairing larger and placing Neutron's second stage inside of that fairing. Neutron will be powered by Rocket Lab's new Archimedes engines, with nine sea level optimized engines on the first stage and one vacuum optimized engine on the second stage. Rocket Lab has already begun construction on the Neutron Production Complex, located at Wallops, Virginia, near their launch site. And they've selected NASA's Stennis Space Center as the location for their Archimedes engine test facility. But unlike their name suggests, Rocket Lab does much more than just rocket launches. They're also in the space systems business, with Photon being a part of that. In addition to Photon, they also provide star trackers and reaction wheels made by Sinclair Interplanetary, a company acquired by Rocket Lab in 2020. This technology provides satellites with navigation capabilities, with star trackers determining a satellite's orientation in space, and the reaction wheel controlling the orientation. Rocket Lab also builds their Frontier S and Frontier X radios, providing telemetry, tracking, and command systems for satellites. They also provide flight software, developed by ASI, another company acquired by Rocket Lab in 2021. This software is used in orbit by the Photon spacecraft and Rocket Lab satellite component hardware. And under PSC, another company acquired in 2021, Rocket Lab provides satellite separation systems used to separate satellites from the launch vehicle once in orbit. These separators are compact and lightweight and have a 100% success rate over PSC's 20-year history and their most recent acquisition of Solero, which was acquired by Rocket Lab in January this year, builds solar panels using their own solar cells, which are the highest efficiency space solar cells in the industry. All of these space systems products gives Rocket Lab one of the most vertically integrated businesses in the space flight industry. Many of the components needed to put a satellite in orbit are all provided by Rocket Lab. Looking at their latest quarterly report from quarter two this year, we see that Rocket Lab brought in more than $55 million of revenue, with a cost of revenues of $50.5 million. This gave Rocket Lab a $5 million gross profit. These revenues are up an incredible 392% year over year. A significant part of this revenue growth came from the expansion of the space system side of their company, driven by their more recent acquisitions. ASI, PSC, and Solero made up half of Rocket Lab's revenue in quarter two, while organic Rocket Lab products made up the other half of the revenues. 
So although they had extremely high revenue growth year over year this past quarter, that level of growth only came because they didn't have those revenues from ASI, PSC, and Solero last year, well they did this year. But excluding these acquisitions, Rocket Lab's growth was still an incredibly high 144% year over year as they listed in their earnings call. Their research and development expenses came in just over $19 million, mostly driven by the development of Neutron, Electron Reusability, and Photon. Their selling general and administrative expenses came in just under $19 million, giving Rocket Lab an operating loss of $33 million. Subtracting their other expenses, Rocket Lab had a $37.4 million net loss in quarter two this year. Rocket Lab has a pretty solid balance sheet with $542 million of cash and $706 million of current assets. The company has $298 million of non-current assets, which brings their total assets to just over a billion dollars. Subtracting their total liabilities, Rocket Lab has a book value of $713 million. Rocket Lab's stock is down 66% year to date trading for $4.12 per share at a $1.9 billion valuation. This puts Rocket Lab at a price to sales ratio of 15 and a price to book ratio of 2.7. This is a very attractive valuation for Rocket Lab in my opinion and I think I'll be buying some of the stock pretty soon. There's really been no better time to buy Rocket Lab with their revenues growing at an excellent pace while their valuation has declined substantially. So let me know in the comments what all of you think about Rocket Lab, and be sure to check out some of my other videos. That's all for today, and I'll see you in the next video.